Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may He enlighten the understanding of each of you so each of you may know how to behave at least before God. Because if you don't know how to behave before the world, who knows at least before God you, you know? In your requests, in your prayers, you present your requests to Him, your needs. Because unfortunately, people couldn't care less about the Word of God. Unfortunately, people have no idea of what the Word of God means. God is the Word. God is the Word. And when He gives us His Word, He's giving us of His essence, of His Spirit, of His life, in order for us to be able to know how to proceed in this world, how to make choices, and on which foundation we are going to build our future upon. And only the Spirit of the Word, which is the Holy Spirit, is capable of doing this and make it visible in our lives. So many people, unfortunately, only know how to receive. They only want to receive. They're not worried about the will of God. They are worried about their own will. They are busy with satisfying their desires, their will, their, the whims of their flesh, their vanities, their lust. And when they come to church, they externalize all of these. Oh, God, give me this. God, give me that and the other. Like children. Children asking for sweets. Oh, I want this. I want that. You know what I mean? When a child goes to the toy store and they're like, oh, I want this, I want that. They want everything. And these are how people are because they don't think, they don't rationalize. They don't put their mind to think according to the thoughts of God, the Word of God. God is the Word. If you want to conquer anything from God, you have to hold on to the Word of God. Don't you think that you can override the Word of God in order to conquer your objectives? Because this won't happen ever. So I see, I notice with sadness that there are many people who want the Holy Spirit. They want to receive the Holy Spirit. Why? The question is, why? Why do they want to receive the Holy Spirit? What is their desire, the purpose of receiving the Holy Spirit? Is it to be led by the Spirit and have the character according to God's character and carry His image to be saved or to guarantee the salvation of their soul? No. They want the Holy Spirit to be able to tell others as well, Oh, I have the Holy Spirit. Oh, you received. Oh, I did as well. Oh, you speak in tongues? Me too. Blah, 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 blah. And then they speak in tongues. So, unfortunately, disgracefully, this is the situation that I've been able to see in this world. Everywhere. Every place I've been to, I've seen that. The countenance, the look on people's face is, is being a distorted image. They come full of despair to resolve their problem. 
but they forget that once resolving their problem in that moment, later on they will have all the problems and tomorrow all the ones and they will always live from problem to problem, just seeking for blessings, just seeking for the solution for a problem, running after the wind. This is the reality. And when they should, they should use the intelligence because you are intelligent. Everyone has intelligence. There is no one who doesn't have intelligence. Everyone has some more, others less, but everyone has a mind and the ability to think and rationalize. We see that to do bad things, everyone has intelligence to do it. Yes or no? Very well, dear friend. I am not here to accuse anyone. I'm here to awaken, to try and awaken your faith, your intelligence, your reasoning, so that you can use your faith with intelligence and to think as God does. This is to be wise. If you think as God does, then you will be a victorious person and you will conquer because God wants the best. God has the best in mind for us. And whoever thinks as God does, they also want the best to their neighbors, to others, and not just to focus on themselves. So pay attention. Jesus said, look at what Jesus says, what Jesus says regarding requests. He says like this, if a son, pay attention, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if third time, or third time here, or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? But people are asking for bread, for fish, for eggs. That's what people are asking. Houses. They are asking for a marriage. They are focusing on the blessings and not on the blesser. And disgracefully, these people are running after the wind. Because year in, year out, the person is there in the church asking, asking, asking. And they haven't realized the penny hasn't dropped yet. That's the reality. It hasn't dropped. Because if I ask for bread, the father will give me bread. If I ask for egg, he'll give me egg. If I ask for fish, he'll give me fish. If I ask for the Holy Spirit, who is the guide, the guide given by God is the guide who guides the children of God. If I ask for the Holy Spirit, who is greater, infinitely greater than bread and fish and eggs or anything else in this world, if I ask for the Holy Spirit, then He will give me the Holy Spirit. It's what He says. If you then, being evil, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Which means that He will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for Him. But Bishop, it's been a long time since I've been asking for the Holy Spirit and I don't receive Him. Why don't I receive Him? Oh, maybe God forgot you. 
Maybe God doesn't have the power to give you the Holy Spirit. It's God's fault. Is that the case? Is it his fault? Is it my fault? Whose fault is that? The fault is in the one who asks. Because they ask in a way that doesn't convince the Father that they truly want the Holy Spirit. That's the reality. If I ask God for anything, I have to convince God in my spirit, in my soul, I have to convince Him that indeed I want that. Because if I don't convince Him, I won't receive it. I will ask half-heartedly. I will be like a beggar. A beggar asks, if people give, amen. If not, what can they do? They go and ask somebody else. And that's how beggars do, isn't it? That's how they do it. They ask. It doesn't cost anything to ask. To ask is free. Now, to put the soul, to put the spirit in that request, to put the entire life on that request, and to dive in with all of your strength, with all of your soul, with all of your strength in that request, it's another story. So God gives the Holy Spirit to those who will ask of Him with sincerity, with truth and totality. So those who still haven't received the Holy Spirit is because they haven't convinced God that they truly want the Holy Spirit. That's all. That's so, because God knows. For me, you may convince me that you are asking properly. Oh, I fasted, I do this, I do that and the other. You are convincing me. And you convinced me. And indeed, they asked. They really asked. But why didn't they receive though? Because the Holy Spirit is only given by God. It's not like egg or bread and fish. The Holy Spirit is God. So, God knows those who ask, He knows those who are truly asking with sincerity, and He knows those who are asking, those who are, how can I say, just trying, just trying. Therefore, dear friend, pay close attention. I'm not here criticizing anybody. I'm just teaching, speaking by the Spirit what happens. Why many people ask and don't receive. Why is it? Because they ask half-heartedly. They ask as an attempt, like a game. They risk, they try. It doesn't cost anything to ask, Oh God, can you give me? Okay. It's not like this. God doesn't work like that, dear friend. If in your request... You do not convince God that you truly want Him, then you won't receive Him. You may spend 20, 30, 50 years, your entire life asking, and you won't receive it. Now, if you put your strength, your blood, you put all of your soul, if you fight with God, this is the word, to fight with God, as Jacob did. He wrestled. He wrestled with God because he was desperate. He wrestled with God. And when we ask, if we don't wrestle with God, if we don't convince God that we really want that, then nothing will happen. This is the answer. Jesus, Jesus said, for everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Jesus said that, and before that he said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Oh, Bishop, I've been asking, knocking, seeking, insisting, but it still hasn't happened. Why then? Is it God's fault? Is it the church's fault? Is the fault in the word of God? Or is it your own fault? Evaluate your faith, dear friend. Evaluate your faith. 
and be sincere, transparent, truthful. Because when a person goes for the all or nothing, when a person goes for the all or nothing, do or break, it's life or death. When they go with this spirit, this is the altar. And on the altar, when the person goes to the altar, this is it. It's all or nothing. It's yes or no. It's life or death. It's all or nothing. They have nothing to lose. They put everything, all of their strength, their spirit, their soul, all of their being on the altar. And then indeed, they proved to God that they really want it and they receive it. They receive it straight away. They receive it straight away. Praise God. Dear friends, here is the answer to those who insist in asking for the Holy Spirit and still haven't received Him because they ask half-heartedly and then they are there sucking their thumb. May God bless you and may He open your understanding, may He open your mind, your thought, in order for you to think according to the way God thinks, so that you can enjoy the benefits of what God has promised in His Holy Word. Tomorrow we are going to be speaking more about this. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.